Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to yet another episode of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. It's Wednesday, new release day here on the channel. And I got Rich Catino joining us today because he's got some new okay. stuff to show off, including a big old rat box set, right? What's up, Rich? Right. How you doing? What's good. Up, guys? I'm good. Good, good. Show and tell day today. Yeah. Right, right. So I know a lot of people have gotten this already. You've seen videos of it, right? Yep. So this just just came out, I think this week maybe. Right? I don't know. Yeah, I think what Friday last Friday, I think. Something Probably. Like that. Yeah. So it's the Atlantic years, but you don't get the EP. You know, that predates that. So that's not included in this, but this is the box that you take off. But I've seen interviews with Stephen Pearson. He said that that's gonna be coming out. He's gonna be putting it out. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Yeah, so that'd be nice. But it'd be nice to have been in the set because it's all the classic lineup, right? Yeah, yeah, but it, it never works out that way, it seems. Sometimes. <laughs> so these are basically reproductions from the originals. I noticed, though, I forgot to grab my originals. My out of the cellar is not red. Mine was just like a white paper sleeve. Yeah. So unless I got a different, you know, uh, print of it. I don't remember. Um, and I... God, I think I had that when that first came out. I think I bought that on cassette. I don't remember if I had it on LP or cassette. Okay. But these are really nice. These are those heavy gram, you know, what is it, 180, I think they're called, yeah, right? 180, yeah. Nice and heavy vinyl. Basically all the, you know, the reproduction of what it was on the front and the back. No bonus tracks on any of these, but they sound great. If you've gotten the, I think there was a 2020 remaster cds that came out there was a little box that came out it was yeah. called the atlantic years yep yep and i compared that to these and the only difference i noticed is this the vinyl has like a tighter mix if that sounds right the cds have a little bit of a brighter sound to it maybe a little bit louder okay. but this feels a little bit fuller maybe i think but it sounds great. If you remember what it sounded like on vinyl back then, these are no different because the original mixes were were great. It was just the 80s. So maybe it was a little more trebly. You know, this maybe I think brings in a little bit more bottom end and some bass. I think when you get it remastered now. But like I said, the CDs that I have from the previous set, they just sound a little bit brighter, a little bit louder, maybe. Okay. This this just sounds great on vinyl. You can hear all the drums. You can hear the cymbals. You can even hear a little bit, I think, a little bit more of um, Juan's little bass lines that he used to throw in the songs. Which is always nice, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so I think maybe this remaster, you know, pulls a little bit more of that out compared to when they came out in the 80s. But I put on my original records from the 80s and they sounded, still sounded great. You know, this maybe just made it a little more bassy maybe if you want to say maybe a little more drums in it you know? okay. yeah i mean yeah. i always thought those especially those first couple albums were always really good sounding records i mean yeah i never had an issue with them i did notice going through the records seller and privacy is a little bit heavier the guitar sound this dancing and reach for the sky is a little more slick okay you know the sound of the albums um but yeah, they have the same reproductions of the in, inner sleeves, you know. It's a cool shot of the band, by the way, right? Yeah. I like those. I dig this album, Dance Undercover. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Dance, Drive Me Crazy, One Good Lover, Body Talk. Oh, Body Talk is fantastic. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've always been a big fan of that. Uh, my favorite, Looking for Love. I thought that should have been a single. That's a great song. Um. You got Reach for the Sky. Same thing, same deal. You got the shot of the band on the inside. Yep. And then you got the big R on the other side. My vinyl has the same thing. The only one I didn't have was Detonator, because when that came out in 91, 91, I think, that's when everything was CDs. So I didn't think to get this at the time. I wish I did. But this sounds really cool on vinyl. I got a nice appreciation for this album when I listened to it on vinyl. Yeah, I only ever had that on CD. Yeah, same here. But this is a cool album. I dig this. 
Do you like this one? Uh, I don't love it. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I like it better than Reach for the Sky. I got to say. It's funny because we just, uh, Martin Popoff and I just did, uh, guessed it on Guitar Hack show last week. And we right. we ranked the catalog of Rat. And it's the second time I've done it because I did right. that here on Sea of Tranquility a couple of years ago. Okay. And uh, I, I think I enjoy Reach for the Sky more than they, those two did. Oh. So, yeah. That, but I had, you know, it's I, for me, the first two albums are by far the best. Yes. But I, you know, I think the first four are are a lot of fun. You know? Oh, yeah. And this one, I think it's got a lot of great songs on it. Shame, Shame, Shame was a oh, single. That's, yeah, that's one of them. True. Yeah. So cool. Love and Use a Dirty Job. Yep. Not bad. Wasn't my favorite, though, at the time. No, I like still. it. I like it. But I really like One Step Away. Uh, Heads I Win, Tails You Lose. Yeah, it's a good one. Can't Wait on Love is awesome. That's really catchy. Uh, Giving Yourself Away is the ballad that should have been a hit. That wasn't. No. Nope. Right? Great song. And Top Secret. It's another one of my favorites. That's the last song on the album. So I dig a lot on this album. Right, well, one of those bands for me, uh, I always kind of dug them. I was never a huge fan. Okay. And I, even to this day, Rich, I find I always like their hits better than the album cuts. Really? For some reason. Yeah. I, I, every yeah. single album, the, the songs that I like the best. Because, right. you know, and back then, like on half the album, they would either have a video of or they play on the radio. And yeah. I'm normally not a hits guy. Like I normally always for almost every band, I prefer deep album cuts over. I hits. do too. Cause you've heard it a thousand times. It's like, but rat is one of those rare bands that I, I'm, I'm the opposite, which is kind of okay. weird. Like okay. to me, it's like, I think they, they pick always the best songs to play pick. on the radio and make videos of at yeah. least for me. great That's songs yeah. for singles. Yeah. I got to agree. But like, if you go back to invasion, never use love. Wasn't a single, but wow, is that a great song? It's good, yeah. Right? Dangerous, but worth the risk. Another good that's, one. That's fantastic. You yeah. know, uh, what you give is what you get. Yep. Which actually was a video, too. Yep, it was. Another great one. So, yeah. And then from Seller, another one of my favorites, which was not a single, was You're in Trouble. Another really cool one. Yep. Right? Yep. But the Seller is pretty flawless. You know, oh, the first that yeah. I mean, there's there's really no bad songs on there at all. That's, yeah, that's morning that's, after that's, that's the same. classic. You know, I, I really like the second album a lot, but the classic yeah. album is the first one. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah. So aside from the vinyl, then you get your Nobody Rides for Free single, which was on Point Break. Remember? Yep. Yep. So it's cool you get that. Um bumper sticker. <laughs> why not very 80s right oh yeah uh backstage pass replica from uh invasion you got a, a rat and roll pick nice yeah uh this cool poster oh yeah nice right yeah and then well, you got this on the inside too. It gives you everything that's in it. And this on the road and behind the scenes, like all these pictures from the tours and stuff, which is very nice. Good quality paper too. It's not chintzy or thin. We got so many cool shots of the band. Yeah, it looks like an old tour program. That's yeah. yeah those are always cool. Yeah. yeah. That would be nice if we actually got a pro shot concert, right? From that era, they never released one. Yeah, that live. That'd be awesome. You know, there's some stuff on YouTube, some clips, some pro shot things. There was that one. You remember that was on uh, MTV in like '83, '84. I forgot where it was from. It was from California or something. Yeah, I don't remember. Like right when, right when Seller came out, I forgot what show it was. But there's a few clips from that. That's out there. So it's nice. It's very well worth it. I know it's a little, I think it's a little expensive. It's up there. It's like close to $200. Wow. Something for the vinyl one, at least, I yeah. think. All the information on the albums, it's cool. So 
That was nice. It's worth it. If you never got them, you know, back in the day or you did and you just got rid of the records, it's a good second chance to get them again, you know? Yeah, it's a nice box set. It's well put together. Yep. Do you know how many, uh, how many they pressed? Like how many? I don't know. Can you see that? Well, sometimes on the back of the boxes, they'll say like, you know, number 15 of 3000 yeah. or whatever it's. Thanks to um, Chip from Chipster Entertainment also for sending this. So thank you if you're watching. <laughs> and then this is uh, the back of the box. Cool. Yeah. So it's a nice set. I highly recommend it. There you go. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Rich, Rich has some other goodies too. In the yeah. Yeah. So this one came out a few, actually in 22, I want to say, unless I'm wrong. But the number of the beast with the Hammersmith show? Late in the year, right? I want to say late in the year. Yeah. Or in the winter. But we were talking about doing this, so we didn't get to it yet. So might as well put this in there too, right? But this is an awesome set because that Beast Over Hammersmith show, that set list is so awesome. So you got that on the back. Love that. So cool. Yeah. And how great is it when you open the two of them together? Awesome. <laughs> uh, classic Derek Riggs, right? Yep. So good, man. Yeah. So good. So then on the inside, you got all these these liner notes on the one side. You can see it already. You're getting a glare. No, yeah, that's good. good. And then you got that with the track listing. Yep. Let me see. Is that better? Yep. I can see it's like a light glare, right? So you got, uh, then it opens up again. Very cool. Nice. Uh, yeah. The run to the hills artwork. <clears throat> I always love that one. Eddie battling the devil. Yep. And it's a uh, triple vinyl. So you got the original album with Total Eclipse on there you know how some, uh, editions, perp, uh, perp. some editions it's not there some editions it is so this one yeah. on the vinyl it's back on there great song that should have stayed on the album right oh for sure yeah for we, sure. we yeah. sadly never got that on the u.s release which right belongs on there yeah and this sounds amazing that's a great picture too the single for number of the beast yep he chops off devil's head that's awesome yep. so this sounds great remastered and then the other two are the hammersmith show so you got all these pictures and the tracks live shots and what everybody played that's what's really cool remember iron man used to do that like in live after death they had all the, in the instruments these guys played the guitars their setups and everything yep yep so they got that here But dude, this set list, <laughs> this set list is amazing. Murders, Wrath Child, Run to the Hills, Children of the Damned, Number of the Beast, Another Life, Killers, Acacia Avenue, Total Eclipse, Transylvania. Doesn't get much better than that, right? Oh my God. If I could, if I could have Iron Maiden do my, my dream set list concert, it would be like from the first three, four albums, and that's it. I don't need anything else. <laughs> <laughs> the more obscure and the deeper cuts the better right yep yep that's cool they got all the tour dates here on the other side very nice yeah this is a great great reissue if you can get this release reissue of the album but a release with your your hammersmith and then the other track she got prisoner hallowed Phantom of the Opera, Iron Maiden, Sanctuary and Drifter, Running Free, Prowler, Mod On. Yep. <laughs> well, because you know we don't we don't get much stuff from the first two albums anymore when they play live, so it's like you got to be healthy dollar for those two there. I know. And the last time they did a set list like that was, I want to say it's 2015 when they did the Ozfest. Mm. They did that uh, early years. But when they came here to America, they did just Ozfest, and that was it. 
Yeah. It was, it was part of the set list, but it wasn't the whole set list. So if you missed it, then you missed it, you know. But yeah, if you can get this, very well worth it. Yeah, it looks good. Nice stuff. Because I know the, the Beast over Hammersmith, if you got the Eddie's archive, I think it was called, years ago, it came in that set, CD version of it, just the, you know, the live show. But it never came out like this as a vinyl. Yeah. So if you have that, you remember that archive thing? I think it was called Eddie's Archive, and it had all like yeah. the singles, the B-sides, some live stuff. Everything, cool. everything you'd ever want, right? All in one nice mm -hmm. little package, you know. Yeah, but it's nice to have it again, you know, like this in the vinyl. Cool. So, got that. And the next thing, which I think you were at this show, right? I was. This Kiss show, which yep. just came out. Poughkeepsie, right? Yeah, Mid-Hudson Civic Center, Poughkeepsie, New York. Now, do you remember anything from this? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yep. Do you remember it, it sounding as sloppy as it is here? It wasn't great. And yeah. it was one of the only shows that Mark St. John actually played. Right. And he wasn't even all that healthy for that. I mean, even like he was supposed to get like an unaccompanied guitar solo during that show. He right. couldn't even do that. So Paul Stanley came out and just basically did like hammer-ons and pull-offs with one hand for like right. 15 minutes. And I was like, really? That's what you're going to do? Uh, yeah. yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. Yeah, it's not. Well, when you get this, they actually have it listed as there's a guitar solo, but it's Paul Stanley. Yep. Yep. And then you got a drum solo and a bass solo. So this track listing is just about the same as this when this came out. Remember this? No. That's the Animal Eyes on Censored Concert. No, nah, I don't remember seeing that. That was on MTV. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, back then. I remember but that. But that's with uh, Kulik, right? It was Kulik, right. But I was looking this up between this Poughkeepsie show and that show. It's only like a week or like 10 days. This is November 28th, right? So when I looked up Animal Eyes, they recorded that December 8th, 1984. Yeah. So between that short time... Mark's not playing in the band, and, and Bruce is already on there, and they recorded that show for the VHS. Well, I, had, I had heard that he was traveling with the band right? all the early dates, and like I heard he was backstage in Poughkeepsie that night mm -hmm. uh, because okay. Mark was having lots of problems. And yeah, it's a shame because he looked great, but yeah. you could tell something was going on. And then, yeah. when, you know, I remember like, because again, you know, we didn't know. There was no internet back then, so none of us right. knew this shit was happening. Yeah. And I remember like, Paul Stanley came out and played that horrible guitar solo. And I remember saying to my buddy, because I was a freshman in college at the time, and uh, it was, he was my roommate. And I'm like, why the hell are they letting Paul play this crappy guitar solo when they got Mark St. John in the band? I was like, that's kind of weird. And then, yeah. like, literally you heard on MTV, like, a couple weeks later, that he was he was no longer in the band. It's like, oh, shit, you know what happened? So, yeah. yeah. It's a shame. And then this show, Paul Stanley does the same solo. <laughs> So it, I guess they just decided to, you know, continue doing their set list the way they were going to do it. But this this is part of that soundboard series that they're doing. Yeah. So you can tell this is very bare bones. I don't know if the rest of them are, but this is just like paper. You know. Like yeah, I have uh, I have uh, I got one. Which one is it? I'm trying to remember which one. I bought one of the more recent ones that was from, I think, yeah. 77. It sounded yeah. great, though. I mean, but yeah, the packaging is terrible. They do the same thing. It's like this cardboard type of material. Everyone looks exactly the same. Yep. Oh, okay. I thought maybe it was just for, you know, for this one. No, no, they're all like that. Okay. So yeah, this is um an interesting listen. <laughs> it's not as this, this show when they did the, um, the animal eyes uncensored is much tighter, but strangely enough, the sound quality, like their instruments and the way it projects through the audio it has the same sound as it does on this show. Okay. You know, this is just off the soundboard, I guess. I don't know if it's, sounds like they, you know, did some mixing or whatever, but it's as raw as you're going to get. Like there's mistakes, there's levels going up and down, there's bad notes. <laughs> it's like, sometimes I hear, you know, the bass coming through real, you know, dominant and then other times it's just on the bottom and then it's, yeah. And Mark St. John's not doing too well. I, and I like him on Animal Eyes. I love, I really He's like He's a really good player, actually. Yeah, he was really good. Yeah. But Give me that White Tiger album that he did. I mean, he played some really good stuff on there. 
I don't know if it was his health or a rehearsal or what, but it's just not a great performance at this time, you know? Yeah, yeah. Cool tunes, though. Creatures of the Night. It's like a glove, Under the Gun, War Machine. It's a, it's a pretty heavy album, but it just doesn't come across like that too much, you know? Yeah. It's very spotty and choppy. I remember you know, being so psyched to see that show because that was that was the first time I had ever saw I see saw Kiss live. Okay, because I never got a chance to see him during the early makeup era. Right. Um, so then I, you know, that was like I said, uh, it was at Poughkeepsie, and I was going to school in Newport, so it was like ten minutes away. So of course, okay. we went and I was pretty psyched for it. And then oh. thinking, all right, that really wasn't a great show. It was cool, but it wasn't great, you know. And then the whole deal with Mark St. John was just bizarre. So yeah, but they kept the same set list, like I said. For I guess for most of the tour because it's the same thing on, on censored. Yeah. Well, they didn't have time to change it. It's like a week, and then Bruce is already in. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd say when I was listening to it, like some of the songs, they're not too bad. Some of it's a little rushed. They're trying to play too fast, which I noticed about that period too. But Creatures isn't bad. Fits like a glove isn't bad. Um, I still love you kind of pretty good, on this I think. Black Diamond's not too bad. But like, I don't know, every time I listen to this and I listen to the solos, Mark St. John had the same problem as Vinnie Vincent. He played nothing like Ace. And he, and he played nothing like Vinnie Vincent did on those songs. Like he did something completely different. I'm like, what, what song is this for, this solo? Like, who, what is this? You have no idea. He's just yeah. going off all over the place, just shredding everywhere. And I don't remember if Bruce ever did that better than those guys, you know, because, I, you know, Ace is just such a different guitar player from anybody else who was yeah. in the band. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the problem, right? I think, you know, T Tommy Thayer, now I think they basically told him, you got to play these solos exactly like Ace did. You know, everything's yeah. going to be the same. But back then, I don't think they were really doing that. Bruce did a good job, though, on that live on Censor. Bruce is a good, really good player. Yeah, he's very faithful to the originals. He did a lot better than Mark St. John. But Mark St. John, I'm like, dude, what are you playing? You're just shredding now. <laughs> it's like another Vinnie Vincent. And I love Vinnie Vincent. That's why they, they stayed away from having shredders in the band right after that, right? Yeah. But he's great on Lick It Up. And he wrote some great songs. But just live, these guys were just overplaying and just doing too much. You know? Not doing it for the song. Just doing it just to shred. But it's cool if you're a Kiss fan just to have, in, you know, the for the history of it, you know? Because it's so rare. If you can get this just to have it for a collection, it's cool to have, you know? Yeah, I, mean, I, actually, I was there. I wasn't, I didn't feel overly compelled to go out and get it. Yeah. But it'd be cool if they released this officially. This never officially came out. Because this is a much better presentation of the band of that at tour, that time yeah. with Bruce playing, you know? Get a nice, you know, remix and a remaster on it. Probably would sound pretty good. Yeah. Bruce, I think, was a uh, was a good soldier for the band. I mean, I think he uh, he was he did what he was supposed to contributed some really fine guitar playing over the years. And yeah. I kind of think he got a little lost in the shuffle, you know, like for whatever reason. I think over the years, though, he got more appreciation as time went on. Yeah, you're probably right. Probably. Yeah. So, I apologize, everybody, for the dogs going berserk here in the house. My wife is a dog <laughs> trainer and she's training outside and <laughs> my three are going nuts they want to be out there doing it as well so yeah it's crazy so cool so we got uh kiss soundboard we got uh the maiden and the rat yep. box set so lots rat of cool stuff for you guys to go check out and yep. i want to thank rich as always for coming on and showing some cool stuff thanks for having me again right. we'll be seeing rich uh, soon here on the channel and uh between now and then visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on youtube all together all the damn time um might have more reviews for you here today i think uh, rick labonte is also coming on he's going to talk about some uh, alice cooper reissues so we got all sorts of cool stuff and plus uh i've got new ray alder and hopefully new steve lukather and i might even give even though chris allo last week reviewed the live evil box set i just got that did you see i, I told you guys yeah yeah i think i might have a few things to say about this too this week so uh i'll probably do a quick little video on my take mm -hmm. on the live evil box set as well so lots to do as always so uh thanks for watching everybody visit us on the web at www did i say that already i don't know maybe i did whatever uh <laughs> thanks for watching everybody for rich continue thanks, on p pardo we'll see you soon here with more stuff till then have a good one bye-bye